Hi, my name is Callan Jones and our group will be presenting the Middle Range Theory of Comfort developed by Dr. Katherine Kolkabi. The members of our group include Don Dunn, Marinelle Hardin, and Morgan Martin. We will be starting with the theorist's background. Dr. Kolkaba's nursing career began in 1965 when she obtained her diploma in nursing. She was employed on a dimension unit as a charge nurse when she decided to return to school to pursue her master's in nursing, specializing in gerontology. Her experience working with elderly patients with dementia had sparked her interest in the concept of comfort, and when she decided to pursue a doctoral degree, she focused on this concept in her coursework and began to develop the theory of comfort. The passing of her brother from cancer during the same time period led her to explore the concepts of comfort. While completing her doctoral studies, she published the concept analysis, diagram, and operational definition for the theory of comfort. Whether theories are grand or mid-range, they organize disciplinary thinking and influence practice and research. By definition, grand theories are abstract, complicated, and removed from practice. Compared with grand theories, mid-range mid theories contain fewer concepts or relationships are adaptable to a wide range of practice and experience and can be built from many sources and are concrete enough to be tested. Dr. Kolkaba remains an ANA certified gerontology nurse and is a member of Sigma Theta Tau International. She founded a local parish nurse program that she continues to be involved with and runs her company, The Comfort Line. She travels around the country as a guest lecturer and conducts workshops for healthcare facilities. In addition to all these activities, Dr. Kolkaba continues to teach part-time at the University of Akron College of Nursing. We will now be discussing the practice experiences and theoretical sources that influence uh, Dr. Kolkaba's development of the theory of comfort. Kolkaba's first steps towards the development of the mid-range theory of comfort and identification of the complexities of the concept to place during her tenure as the head nurse on the Alzheimer's unit. While working there, she recognized that there was a vital piece of nursing that was missing. Kokaba pondered what behaviors did the staff hope the patients would exhibit that would indicate the absence of excess disabilities and should the term excess disabilities be further delineated for clarity. The word comfort seemed to project the desired state for patients to be in when they were not engaging in special activities. While pursuing her master's degree at Case Western Reserve in Cleveland, Ohio, Kokaba was given the assignment to diagram her nursing practice. She utilized the concept of comfort to designate the state in which she wanted her patients to be in when they were not engaging in special tasks. During the presentation of her framework for dementia care at a gerontological conference, a member of the audience inquired about whether or not she had completed a concept analysis of comfort. She replied, no, but that's the next step. Kokaba began her concept analysis by extensively reviewing literature about comfort from the disciplines of nursing, medicine, psychology, psychiatry, psychiatry, ergonomics, and English, but more specifically from Shakespeare's use of the concept of comfort in the Oxford English Dictionary. She discovered a rich historic record of the use of comfort in Nightingale's notes, notes on nursing, Murray's philosophical theories, old and new textbooks, and the writing of other nurse theorists including Orlando, Henderson, Patterson, and Zedrod. Colcabi spent the next two years organizing the findings which concluded the three technical senses of comfort currently utilized in nursing, relief, ease, and renewal. The works of three early nursing theorists were used to synthesize the three types of comfort. Relief was derived from the work of Orlando, ease derived from the work of Henderson, and transcendence was synthesized from Patterson and Zedrod. Due to the incorporation of mid-range mid theories into the types of comfort, the work of grand nursing theorists were ruled incompatible with the common ground that was needed to link relief, ease, and transcendence. What was needed was an abstract and general conceptual framework that ran parallel with comfort and that embodied a manageable number of highly abstract constructs. The 1938 work of psychologist Henry Murray satisfied, satisfied these criteria. His theory was centered on human needs, therefore is appropriate for patients experiencing multiple stimuli and stressful healthcare situations. Following a number of steps over several years, the theory of comfort was finally published in 1994. After the development of her theory, Kolkaba tested it through the utilization of her experimental design and her dissertation. In that particular study, the healthcare needs related to the early breast cancer. The holistic intervention utilized was guided imagery and the projected outcome was patient comfort. The findings of the study revealed dissimilarity between the women receiving guided imagery and the usual care group. 
Further support for the theory of comfort was revealed during the study of the following four major theoretical propositions about the nature of holistic comfort. Comfort is generally state-specific. The outcome of comfort is sensitive to changes over time. Any consistently applied holistic nursing intervention with an established history for effectiveness enhances comfort over time. And lastly, total comfort is greater than the sum of its parts. Hi, my name is Morgan Martin and I will be talking about the primary sources and the major considerations of the theory. Though many theoretical works could have been used regarding the theory of comfort, the publications listed here are the primary sources we use for our presentation. Major considerations of the theory. With regards to conceptualization of the nursing paradigm, Kolkaba defines the client as the recipient of care, which may include the individual, family, institution, or could be the nurse. She defines environment as any feature of a patient, family, or institution setting that can be influenced by the nurse, loved one, or the institution itself to improve comfort. She defines health as the optimum function of a patient, family, or community facilitated by enhanced comfort. With regards to nursing, she describes it as the purposeful assessment of comfort needs, the development and implementation of comfort interventions with regards to those needs, and the evaluation of comfort levels after implementation related to the baseline. Major central concepts and definitions. Healthcare needs are specific comfort needs identified by the patient that emerge due to stressful health situations and include physical, psychospiritual, social, and environmental needs. Comfort interventions are defined as interventions implemented through the dedication of nurses and institutions designed and used to enhance comfort and target specific health care needs. These interventions have a main goal of immediately improving the patient's comfort and or promoting desirable health seeking behaviors. Intervening variables are a set of interacting forces that act simultaneously and determine how a person perceives the event. These forces include the person's past experience, age, attitude, emotional state, support system, and the totality of elements in the present experience. Comfort is a complex term associated with a person's state of thinking with regards to a holistic outcome of specific interventions. It consists of three states which include relief, ease, and transcendence. It also includes four contexts context that must be met in order to achieve a state of comfort which we discussed earlier, physical, psycho-spiritual, socio-cultural, and environmental needs. Health-seeking behaviors were incorporated by Slotfeld um, with relation to attainment of health, where she proposed that health-seeking behaviors and comfort have a reciprocal relationship because when improved comfort is obtained, patients are strengthened to participate in health-seeking behaviors. She considered health-seeking behaviors to be internal, external, or a peaceful death. Institutional integrity, best practices, and best policies are all related. Institutional integrity is defined by the corporation's ability to possess qualities of being complete, whole, sound, upright, honest, and sincere. It can be assessed using statistics such as improved satisfaction, improved health-related outcomes, and financial viability. Institutional integrity produces evidence with regards to best practices and best policies. Both terms terms are used to contribute to achieving the best possible patient and family outcome. Policies also provide protocols to follow in order, into, in order to implement adequate health care interventions. The major assumptions developed by Kokaba um, include human beings have holistic responses to complex stimuli. Number two, comfort is a desirable, desirable holistic outcome that is germane to the discipline of nursing. Three, Comfort is a basic human need which persons strive to meet or have met in an active endeavor. Four, enhanced comfort strengthens patients to engage in health-seeking behaviors of their choice. Five, patients who are empowered to actively engage in health-seeking behaviors are satisfied with their health care. And six, institu institutional integrity is based on a value system oriented to the recipients of care. There are, there are also theoretical assertions and propositions. There are three types in the theory of comfort, which include, number one, comfort interventions are affected when the recipient of care experiences an increase in the comfort with the compassion, with, the, with comparison to the assessed baseline. Um, number two, recipients of increased comfort produce an increase in participation in health-seeking behaviors, which in turn can improve all, overall health care of the patient. 
Number three, an increased participation in health-seeking behaviors produce an increase in quality of care, which, directly, which is directly linked to the institutional integrity and the institution's ability to collect evidence for best practices and best policies. Hello, my name is Mary Neal Hart. I'm going to be discussing concepts and relationships. The conceptual framework for the theory of comfort outlines every aspect of the patient's experience while in the healthcare setting or situation. Kolkoba is quoted as saying, comfort is an antidote to the stressors inherent in health care situations today. And when comfort is enhanced, patients and families are strengthened for the tasks ahead. In addition, nurses feel more satisfied with the care they are giving. As her schematic shows, the first three concepts are considered together and potentiated by one another as to what level of comfort is achieved. The patient usually meets health care needs with support systems in place. When this dynamic independence is compromised, the need for intervention becomes apparent. Once needs are assessed, nursing interventions are targeted to reestablish or achieve comfort, and this addresses all aspects of the person. Intervening variables are many and are important when considering what the nurse can and will do to establish comfort for the patient in each particular situation. These three concepts together frame the achievement of enhanced comfort described as a holistic strengthening that is immediate, including relief, specific need that has been met, ease, calm or contentment, and transcendence, rising above current circumstances or pain, perhaps with the help of the nurse. Ideally, once enhanced comfort is achieved, the patient will in turn have positive health-seeking behaviors, or HSVs. These are the behaviors of the patient in the hopefully self-motivated self pursuit of health. While consulting with healthcare providers comprised of internal and external behaviors or if, or if appropriate, a peaceful death. Maintaining positive HSVs will keep the patient as independent as possible. Institutional integrity is a key concept in this theory. The community should be able to feel trust that they will be receiving the best practices for the best opti optimal outcomes when receiving care. Out of this are developed the best policies that allow access to the most efficient delivery of care for medical conditions using evidence-based practice. Logical form. Kolkoba used the following three types of logical reasoning to develop the mid-range theory of comfort, induction, deduction, and retroduction. She used her experiences as the head nurse of an Alzheimer's unit to guide her first steps toward the development of the theory of comfort. She recognized that the terminology being used to describe the practice of dementia did not accurately describe her practice. Coming to this realization caused Kokoba to ponder several questions regarding what patients did in the meantime and what behaviors the staff hoped the patients would exhibit. Answers to these questions mark the first efforts made towards constructing a theory centered on comfort. The deductive stage entailed relating comfort to other concepts. The definition of comfort embodied the works of three grand nursing theorists, thus Kolkova was forced to look elsewhere for the means to unify relief, ease, and transcendence. Retroduction is utilized in fields that have few available theories. Kolkova utilized retroduction to add the concept of institutional integrity. Research must be up to date on all components of nursing and is used to provide evidence when determining decisions and describing the effectiveness of holistic comforting care interventions. Research with regards to outcomes of holistic nursing strategies has been used in these areas that are on the slide. Education establishes a foundation for nursing, pra for nursing practice. Kokova's theory of comfort has been shown to provide an effective means to assess and focus on the holistic comfort needs in any clinical setting where the comfort care plan developed by COCOBA can be applied. Using the theory can also provide students with means to acquire relief from excessive work coursework, sustain ease with the curriculum, and to tr acquire transcendence, transcendence from their stressors. Practice. Kolkova's theory of comfort has been used as a framework for students and nurse researchers in these areas listed. When used in everyday practice, the desirable outcome of comfort in relation to commitment of HSBs will result in better outcomes for patients, families, the healthcare team, and the institution. As nurses, we must ensure 
that comfort interventions are individually designed based on the needs of the patient and family. COCOBA suggests asking the patient and or family member to rate their comfort level along with their level of pain. They use a 0 to 10 numeric scale with 10 being the best possible uh, comfort and having comforting interventions readily available for implementation. The theory of comfort is highly adaptable to all nursing situations with all patients and across the entire client lifespan. Comfort as an outcome is crucial to both restorative care as well as palliative care. Advanced nursing practices role has a part in each part of this theory. The shift of the APRN from the primary RN bedside role to the manager of care role changes the indications and implementation of the theory, but the basis of it remains the same, and the importance of it is not diminished. The implications of the theory of comfort for an acute care nurse practitioner are most closely related to planning an appropriate intervention for the patient and evaluating the outcomes of health-promoting behaviors in their clients. The following clinical scenario demonstrates the use of Kolkaba's theory on an APRN practicing in the PICU. Addison is a five-year-old child who comes admitted to the PICU with fever, nausea, vomiting, and abdominal pain. No lab work or diagnostic studies have been con conducted yet. Both her parents are with her. She's crying and she says her tummy hurts. The pediatric APRN Aaron arrives to assess Addison, making a preliminary diagnosis and develop a plan for her care. Erin can tell by Addison's actions, her crying, clinging to her mom, her posture, hunched over, guarding, and withdrawing from care from the nurses, that she's afraid and hurting. Erin wants to assess Addison, but knows that she must gain her trust to ensure compliance, and she must relieve, ease, or help her transcend her physical symptoms of fear and of pain. Using the theory of comfort, Erin makes a mental note of the taxonomic structure of Addison's needs and makes an organized plan to address these needs. The first thing she addresses is the environment because that's the easiest. She dims the lights, she shuts the door to eliminate some of the noise and gives her some more privacy. She turns on a um, machine that puts stars on the ceiling and immediately she notices that Addison calms down some. She's not crying as loudly or as intensely. She releases the tight grip on her mother's shirt. She even begins to relax her posture. Erin then focuses on Addison's psycho-spiritual and social-cultural needs. She wants to ensure she's not going to be separated from her parents. She moves to the side of the bed opposite her parents and sits down next to her to reduce any fear of intimidation. She begins her assessment by talking to Addison and asking her about her likes and her dislikes and her family and her pets. With this close proximity, Erin's able to assess her breathing, her respiratory rate, pattern, depth, her temperature, um, any odor or discharge from her nose or mouth or ears. During the conversation, as Addison begins to calm down, Erin's able to touch her skin to assess for temperature and eventually is able to listen to her chest and abdomen with a stethoscope. But of course, she lets Addison listen too. Now, that's Ad now that Addison's more relaxed, she's willing to take some Tylenol and some Zofran to help relieve these physical symptoms. And there, then Erin begins the education of the test, both to Addison in a language she can understand and also to her parents. Procedures that need to be done will not be completed in her hospital room to eliminate any correlation of fear or anxiety with her room, and they're done in a separate place. When she does need a procedure, like blood or IV, she's taken to the procedure room and her mom holds her and hugs her during the procedure and she's given a sucker afterwards and let her pick out a favorite movie to watch. Erin's pleased with the outcome of the situation is now awaiting the test results to make a definitive diagnosis and plan of care. In summary, the middle range theory of comfort is developed to focus around the, the, what discipline of nursing does for its patients. The theory of comfort can be utilized in all domains of nursing. It serves as a guide for planning and designing care in any setting. In regards to education, it's a framework to enable students to organize their assessments and plans of care. In research, it's used to validate improvement in patient comfort and the implementation of those interventions. Institutions have implemented this to address comfort as well as best practices. Dr. Cole Cobb's many publications um, have, that have been published have made the theory become known worldwide. This now concludes our presentation on the theory of comfort. We hope you enjoyed it. That's all, folks. <laughs>